to better understand our world, ourselves, and our future. This program is made possible by the people of Chevron. Chevron, giving thought to television. Since we left these dark nights in Africa and escaped to the security of our armchairs, we have forgotten the horror, the turmoil of their hidden battlefields, and the secrets of their special magic. Like ghosts in the moonlight, sleek shapes gather to confront each other, lions to beguile the hyenas, hyenas to torment the lions. They both arrived at an elephant carcass to scavenge. Even those regal lions compete for the rotten flesh. The rivalry reaches far beyond the competition for food. If animals can hate, this is a blood feud of hatred. For millennia, these two scavengers and hunters have waged an ancient war against each other. It is often unpleasant to witness, desperately sad and horrifying, always deeply disturbing. Until now, this war has been veiled in the secrecy of darkness. This is the story of two of Africa's big... Two filmmakers, Derek and Beverly Jobert, have documented an ancient war by getting to know both the lions and the hyenas in one area. These are excerpts from their field notes. The central pride, which we know best, comprises mainly young lionesses and two adult males. Today, one lioness is missing, and something is happening out in the grassland. <laughs> Sometime during the night, hyenas have killed a buffalo. The young lioness is alone, scavenging from their kill. <laughs> their tolerance is short-lived. Calls of the hyena assault carry miles across the grassland to a male of the pride who is always eager to confront the hyenas. <laughs> Usually, we think of lions as noble hunters and hyenas as lowly scavengers. Often it is the other way around. For the young lioness, whom we have named Matsumi, the arrival of the male makes little difference. Males often dominate the kills until they are sated, allowing the females to feed only on scraps. We followed Matsumi, who has left the pride and seems to be on a mysterious quest Methodically, she explores the hills that jut out like granite fortresses on the fringe of the Pride's territory. These hills are landmarks in the northern region of the African country of Botswana. Here, a place called Savuti is famous for its many lion prides and great numbers of hyenas. It is here that the miracle happens. When young lionesses come of age, they always steal off to a secluded spot away from the pride and safe from hyenas. Three cubs are born in this safe hideaway. 
It's surprising to see that their eyes are open, but as yet, they cannot see. By instinct, they know what to search for. And very soon, they locate by smell the nipples that will feed them for the next year. For that time and longer, the cubs will rely entirely on their mother and the pride. From very early on, there is competition for food among lions. Like a reigning queen, this hyena is the most dominant in what we call the Southern Clan. She is the female leader, the matriarch. Her status is probably set for life. She keeps her two tiny cubs separate from the other mothers and their cubs. One of these cubs should grow up to be the matriarch's successor. As long as their mother is head of the clan, her position will ensure their protection. But now these tiny cubs are probably unaware of their privileged birthright. Male hyenas are smaller than the females and subordinate to them all. The females dominate the hyena clan system and a male around the den is an unwelcome threat to cubs and a nuisance to females. This is a female society. In appearance, they are like dogs. But the myths and legends surrounding hyenas are mostly wrong. In fact, they are closer to cats than to dogs. These strange animals' nearest relative is the mongoose. But in some of their behavior, hyenas are like no other animals on Earth. When the sun beats down on the exposed dens, the adults retreat to the distant shade. Well within the southern clan's territory, Matsumi is getting to know her new cubs. All she knows about cubs is drawn from her deep well of genetic knowledge. One of her strongest instincts now is to protect them. Like a princess, one of the hyena cubs remains aloof. Like a child, she is curious about the older cubs. Early observers mistakenly reported that hyenas were hermaphrodites, animals of dual sex. Both males and females have what looks like a penis. At an early age, both males and females try to engage in mock mating. This behavior has never been recorded before. It is among the many strange things about hyenas that make them one of the most fascinating and least understood creatures of Africa. The temptation to join in is too great. But danger stalks the open grassland. Patriarch is alerted and storms back to save her cubs. A lioness from the pride is surrounded and attacked. Her usual close companion, Matsumi, is away in the hills with her cubs. But the rest of the pride rushes to her aid. A young male darts in to take on the hyenas. <laughs> This youngster, on the verge of adulthood, has already had many violent encounters with hyenas. 
fear has turned to something more akin to hatred. Hyenas recognize the transition. It was a skirmish, not a battle. No blood was spilled today. The excited hyena clan gathers around the matriarch. They greet with a peculiar ritual, probably adapted to the dominance of females. This ritual is centered around the development of the mock penis to signal that dominance. The ceremony involves sniffing and licking the genitals. They mark the area where the lions were by leaving a scent on the grass as a signpost. Hyena cubs are like miniature adults, displaying the same behavior patterns as their parents. When the lions appeared, all the cubs bundled into the same den. The matriarch's female cub, whom we now call the princess, finds herself in hostile territory, fighting for her life. When the matriarch returns, the brazen cubs are sent scurrying to their own dens, and the princess is safe. gave the older, larger male the African name Mandevu. The younger, lighter one is Intwaidumela, he who greets with fire. watching and waiting to slip in from the night. quenches the drastic thirst that develops from a cobra bite and listens to the nightmare behind her. are gone, and her own survival now hangs in the balance. <laughs> Tucked away in a distant corner of their territory, the rest of Matsumi's pride sees out another hot day in typical lion fashion. Heat steals the moisture that all life depends on. African bees, like everything else, are desperate for sustenance. They seek out any source of moisture. Oh. 
Although well equipped for most hazards, lions have few defenses against bees. They are more of an irritation than a danger, especially to Intuai Dumela. When the lions move on, the bees go in search of new victims. Hyenas are more tolerant, or lazier, but when the matriarch can't take it any longer, she finds a ready solution. She buries her problem. We stayed with Matsumi for four long days and nights as she struggled against the devilry of the lingering cobra venom. Her vision is still unfocused. The constant salivation dehydrates her. The ordeal has sapped her energy and the pain from the bite in her back leg is obvious as she keeps it from touching the other one. She is totally vulnerable. Each day must be an agony, each night a nightmare. Like the lions, the hyenas patrol frequently to guard against neighboring clans. While on patrol, they come across the snake-bitten lioness. They sense that she can't defend herself, and they circle. <laughs> she meets aggression with what little strength she has. But no hyena is quite willing to risk a frontal attack. In her weakened state, Matsumi seems like an easy target, but Suddenly and quite surprisingly, the hyenas lose interest and vanish into the night. We kept up our watch on Matsumi for another few days, never knowing when the hyenas might return. She lay helpless, letting time heal her wounds. Recovery from a cobra bite is never a sure thing, but we know she is resilient. After a full week, the venom has worked itself out of Matsumi's body. She is able at least to walk once again. Her first impulse is to investigate the site of the confrontation with the cobra for any sign of her cubs. There is none. The hyenas saw to that, and she leaves the area for the last time. Seasons in Botswana seem to explode into sudden change with each rainfall or stirring wind. A solitary lioness has a difficult time hunting and protecting herself from hyenas. Matsumi waits and listens for her missing companions.
Wainwright is back in the area, she recognizes their calls and rushes to join them. It's impossible to say just how much of her story they can smell. One can't help becoming caught up in the spine-chilling excitement of the hunt. Perhaps it has something to do with the memory of a time gone by when we were the prey and our nights were filled with darkness. It's the time of the wildebeest again, and the tawny shapes are drawn by the need to devour. kill is watched from the shadows. Quickly, the hyenas identify the lions and realize that the males are absent. Because Matsumi is weaker, she has to struggle to fight her way into the feeding frenzy. The noise attracts the entire southern clan. As the numbers mount up, the battle begins. <laughs> Perhaps sparked by recent memories, Matsumi is the most aggressive. at exploiting chaos. They keep Matsumi isolated while attacking other lionesses viciously. The lions are helpless, and from the safety of the trees, they can only watch their kill disappear. flows tonight. This incident, at least, was simply a struggle for food. Competition between the super predators. We chose to stay with the lions as the prowling hyenas melted away into the night. By dawn, the lions were still isolated in small groups reluctant to venture down from the trees. The pride begins to relax. They seem comforted by the lifting of the darkness and the disappearance of their enemies.
Matsumi is still shaken. Getting up a tree is always easy. Coming down is less dignified. Matriarch's only surviving cub, the princess, is still enjoying the privilege of her birth. During the long hours we spent around the dens, the hyenas came to ignore us totally and played out their social games. Social time around the den cements the individual's place in the clan. On the long journey from pure scavengers to hunters, hyenas have adapted a quick and clear identification system that is reinforced each day. The princess is being groomed for leadership of the clan, but she is still dependent on her mother. Night after night, these hyenas pass the hours within earshot of the lions, constantly aware of the other's presence, always alert for a weakness to be used. Two families of feuding enemies. With each passing phase of seasonal change, Savuti is transformed as if by magic. Thousands of zebras migrate into the area, and the lions react immediately, converging on any stampede. appear from everywhere, ignoring old established boundaries, encroaching on forbidden ground. They are all after the same food supply. As Matsumi leads the central pride in the hunt, another pride comes running in. They are neighbors and constant adversaries like the hyenas. Matsumi's pride is attacked and chased. As they retreat, one female is separated behind the line of attack by the intruders. She is surrounded and seriously injured. a few minutes of respite between attacks, the female is tormented throughout the night. investigate when the growls subside. The injured lioness is an older female, possibly her mother. But Matsumi can do nothing. She is chased off, 
and the old female is left alone to whatever fate awaits her. In the night, her blood drains out into the grass. Central Pride is now smaller by one lioness. It is always sad to watch the death of a lion or a hyena that we have come to know. But these endless cycles of life and death have continued throughout the ages. After their loss, Matsumi and her pride reassemble and move off into the darkness, silently. The horrors of the night melt away under the warm glow of survival. After the death of the older female and within a month of losing her cubs, young Matsumi comes into heat again. One day, Vu reacts to the scent and follows her trail knowing that she is ready for mating. While the younger male, Intwai Demela, is away patrolling the territory, his brother dominates the mating. A few months later, the southern clan patrols over the same patch of Savuti that soaked up the lioness's life. They are hunting. For the first time, the princess has joined the matriarch on the hunt. have returned on their migration, and the clan methodically runs down the folds, not bothering about stealth. Jamela is back from his patrol, always ready to confront hyenas. <laughs> It is a moment of supreme opportunity for the male. Not concerned with food, his drive is to kill. Her back is broken. The matriarch can't survive a brutal mauling by a male lion. 
On her very first hunt, the princess is faced with a catastrophe. She has only just passed from total dependence on her mother's milk into the harsh world where she will have to fend for herself. As the princess finds her, the matriarch breathes her last. Relationships have to be sorted out. Second and third ranked females now compete for the top position. Males mob a female, possibly to force her to choose a mate. Among hyenas, females select which male to mate with. For months, the clan will be nervous and quarrelsome, weakened against attack by lions or other hyena clans. The life of the princess is also in turmoil. Without the protection of her mother, she has lost all rank in the hierarchy. She wanders in and out of the clan's territory without knowing its limits and without the guidance of an adult, alone in a world full of enemies. site has been abandoned because of fleas, and the new dens have new young cubs. The princess is accepted here because she is still a clan member, but now she has no privileges. Even the new cubs are allowed to take advantage of her. Very soon, she becomes alienated by her uncertainty and leaves the dens for the last time. Marking and patrolling of boundaries by both lions and hyenas is a way of avoiding a conflict, like the recent lion fight, which can result in death. The hyena clan uses a water hole as a territory boundary in the dry season. It is here that the princess joins up with her clan at night to tag along on the hunt. bank, the clan's neighbors have smelled for days the intrusions of the princess and now rush in to confront her disrupted clan. The dispute is over their territorial boundary, which seems to run through the center of the water hole.
during this crucial confrontation, a new matriarch emerges and leads the southern clan into battle. <laughs> their teeth as vicious weapons to inflict heavy wounds on each other, sometimes ending in serious maulings or even deaths. The northern clan is stronger, but the fighting is confused. Finally, they retreat again before the southern advance. After the battle is won, her own clan mistakes the princess as an intruder and attacks her. safe ground is in the center of the water hole. In time, the fallen princess may join either of the clans, but she will never again climb the ladder to dominance. The boundary has been decided and will stay fixed for some months by the smell of the thick pasty markings left by both clans after the clash. Fixed, too, is the relationship the hyenas have with the lions, one that can only change with death, a blood feud that is forever. Once again, but now the matriarch and the pride male express their hostility with unmistakable actions. This new matriarch is confident and defiant, marking where he marks and harassing the much larger lion. calls and her fluffed up tail posture attract support from other clan members and don't go unnoticed by the lionesses on the edge of the open area. The matriarch seems to succeed in the psychological warfare. is dead. The day belongs to the lions. It was not always easy for us to witness these struggles for life. But at the end of it all, perhaps, 
we came to know more about ourselves and the struggles that rage within our own savage souls. Creatures of instinct, helpless to change their destiny. Forever these eternal enemies will fight on. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation from the National Geographic Video Library. Razor sharp teeth, fearsome jaws, the shark is every swimmer's nightmare. I've been bitten twice by sharks and once it was quite nasty. But have we created a deadly myth? I want people to understand that the danger from shark attack is so slight that they don't have to worry about it. Are sharks the victims of our imagination and fear? Find out when National Geographic takes you into the shadowy realm of the sharks. Hidden 